Let's start. Hey, not too bad this time. <laughs> you know, I do have an app to act as a clapper, but it's just more fun to, you know, whack Grendel. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, so this week, apologies up front because I deleted all the footage of inking this week's strip. That was entirely on me. I've gotten way too used to using shift delete. Remember I use Linux, not sure if it's the same on windows or Mac OS, but on Linux, if you do shift delete, you don't have to empty your trash. You don't have to deal with bothersome notifications. Just boom, gone. I thought I was in my camera's file system. When I shift deleted all the files, I was actually in uh, this week's folder of raw footage. So, Whammo, there it goes. But as I said, embrace your mistakes. Turned out to be a blessing in disguise because there's so much inking, so much drawing in this week. Even without that, it was pushing nine minutes of raw footage. And I don't want to waste you guys' time. So that actually turned out well. So you just missed the inking part. It starts right in with put in the PBO resist in there. That said, if you haven't watched other ones, I use Tachikawa Type-C flat nibs. I use the one millimeter for regular lettering and the two millimeter for bold lettering. And of course the zebra comic G for outlines and all that kind of thing. You'll see that in previous videos. If you go back, that's where my dumb ass hasn't, you know, wiped out <laughs> the footage so you can actually see that. This week's strip also, I was going to hold the books up, but I think, you know, even with Grindel acting as Vanna White, much easier if I just put the, you know, put them up in the corner here so you can see them. The two books that were inspiration for this week's strips were Religion and Nothingness by Kiji Nishitani. And I'll put a link to him. He was part of the Kyoto School of Philosophers where as Japan was modernizing or being forced to modernize, a lot of people from the Kyoto University traveled to the West, studied Western philosophy, and a lot of them incorporated the ideas of Nietzsche into their own indigenous Zen practices. And you get a lot of really good synthesis from those two camps meeting. And Religion and Nothingness is one of those books I refer to constantly. Like I said, I'll put a link below, not only to the Coyote School, but there's a book that's a good overview of that. And I'll link to that in the description. Also this week, uh, Valentin Tomberg's Meditations on the Tarot. Originally, this book was published by Anonymous, and it wasn't published till after his death per his request. Valentin Tomberg is a remarkable person. His ideas on Christian Hermeticism are probably second to none in my book. And his writing on the Tarot is revelatory, would be the best way to put that. Um, like I said, I'll put a link in the description. You'll see as the strip goes on and it's kind of appropriate. I think that strip number 18 is where the kelp bag kind of goes off on these topics. It just seemed a natural extension. We'll be returning to baby and the otter and that type of thing. But without him peeling back the layers of reality, figured we needed an explanation of that. <laughs> as always. Thank you guys so much for doing this. I don't want to ramble on too much. Love you all. Thank you so much for your support and your comments and interacting with you on Instagram and Twitter. Love you all. Take care. Bye. Here we go. Number 18. Seems as if we were going to take a deep dive into Hermeticism and French philosophy. Number 18 might be the perfect one numerically. <laughs> And once again, abusing the uh, PBO resist there. And as I said in the introduction, I lost all the footage of inking, which is good because even as it stands now, we're looking at nine minutes, just the raw video edited down. So kind of a blessing in disguise there because I want to keep these right around 10 minutes or under because I don't feel I should be wasting your time. I watched enough art instructional videos on YouTube where it shows them brewing coffee, you get to hear them talk about their laundry machine, yada yada yada. 
No one cares. <laughs> Edit your crap. <laughs> And part of the reason this took so long is not extremely detailed, yet it's detailed enough that there was a lot of steps involved. Plus, I was experimenting. We need to make mistakes and experiment in order to find new things, see how new technique works, yada, yada, yada. You gotta fail a lot, and might as well show your failures. Everybody's too hung up on being perfect. Who cares? Perfection is not interesting. I do like how I inadvertently turned Howden's body into where it looked like a bulldog. That may be a subconscious desire on my part because I love pit, pit bulls and bullies, so, you know. But Howden will remain chubby just like his namesake on the kelp bed. Oh look, aren't we blessed? TV overhead. And when I'm using oil pastels here, um, I'm using the Law of Threes, the Rule of Threes. Instead of just making one blank surface of a color, which looks like a coloring book, use three different colors here, yellow, dapple them in, that way you don't have an even feel to color, which just is not interesting at all. Vary that up a little bit. That goes with your watercolor work, anything that you do. I don't think solid fields of color exist in nature at all, so. And here we go with my favorite technique, wet on wet. I love it because it's always surprising. You can never predict what they're going to do when you're doing that. I think that's the general rule with watercolors. It's fascinating that watercolors are often a beginner set for people, yet they truly are the medium of masters. You really need to know your crap to work them well, and I don't. And you can see Lady Hayward out grubbing around. I never notice these things when... I'm working on a panel, it's when I review the video footage that I'll see them kind of pass by. While Sybil's out keeping our house free of yokai, Hayward's out grubbing for food. <laughs> and you can see there, a little nod, homage to Paul Klee there. I absolutely adore his stuff and his pedagogical notebooks are seriously must read. And there you can see hey, we're grubbing around in the corner a little bit. And at the time I think I could hear Sybil doing pigeon bowling in the uh, kitchen, which is where he goes in and knocks stuff down. Speaking of the fancy feathered feet, there he is. I was thinking of renting him out in case you had a yokai problem in your own house, but that would probably be more like we'd be paying you to take him off our hands. He's such a cantankerous little creature. <laughs> He's totally going to get me back for that. And here, I learned that watercolor and oil pastels go together very well. However, uh, using it would resist. Not the smartest move I've ever made because if you've ever used oil pastels, you know that it's a very common technique to blend them together by rub rubbing them with your finger. So if you're doing that with a gum residue eraser, yeah, it's going to blend together a little bit. I may have to experiment around a little bit more with it as to how I can achieve that effect. And now layering in all the uh, base coats for Chico. That's the other thing. Watercolors really don't come alive, it seems, until you really work those layers in there and bring out the depth and the boldness. But it's great for achieving that kind of three-dimensional shadowy effect with them. It's very easy to do. Which was actually one of the challenges when doing a Howden is the Hermit card because I wanted to stay true to the Marseille Tarot with its very flattened perspective but as you can see there you know I tried to duplicate that but your brain always wants to fill in so they're more rounded shapes more three-dimensional of course you're fighting against that to get that effect of a flattened image such as this straight from the Marseille Tarot so it's a good struggle to go through not really going to complain about that. <laughs> There's really no point in complaining anyways, but 
That would be a really stupid thing to complain about. And once again, nod to Steve Ditko. You know, that was in the very first kill bed. And bringing it back each time that we talk about the Owl's Cable. Once again, if you don't know who Steve Ditko is, oh, go out and find some of his work. You'll be constantly amazed. And these spirals, I've been drawing these forever. It's just something, I don't know. First of all, it's very fun to do, and second, I like the effect that they make, so. Pulling those spirals back in, and then put on top of kind of, like I said, this homage to Paul Klee, it just seemed perfect, especially if you're gonna suggest, you know, different layers to reality. Spirals are universal, everybody knows that, so. But yeah, you can see where it's fighting a little bit, where taking off the resist kind of spread some of that oil pastel into the areas that were to be painted so you kind of get that effect. And that right there is why they created watercolor pencils and color pencils. They're very good at helping with this. And here we go with making Howden the Hermit. And like I said in the introduction, Meditations on the Tarot, it's such a beautiful book. I, it's one of my, I go to it all the time. If you actually physically saw that copy, you would see there's like coffee stains, it's been bent back, it's just generally been abused. It's a well-loved copy. <laughs> His insights are remarkable. And the strange thing is, there's not that many people that have read it. I uh, tend to believe if you really love something, stay away from people who are actually into the same thing. Cause I remember a while ago, this is years and years ago, I was on a tarot message board and the general lack of any understanding or willingness to do work besides it just being intuitive was chronic and yeah I, it was much better once I got off that site <laughs> and we're nearing the end here I can't believe you uh stuck with me so long thank you guys so much you make it all worthwhile it's amazing and love you I'll see you next week take care bye <laughs>